Hello. So, what have we been getting up to this episode? A bit of plumbing, septic tank, a bit of electrics, a bit more framing, um, insulation, a bit more foil, um, cutting grass, making jam. Be on a tractor. Actually cut most of the grass with um, with that strimmer, but it's not very if, um, economical. Probably done about ten liters in fuel in that thing. Um, yeah. I said earlier about how the grass is uh, quite important for the livestock during the winter. So we said uh, our friend with the tractor helps us a lot. We said he could have our grass here. So he actually has got a special lawnmower, petrol lawnmower. And he did this whole area um, in a couple of hours. But yeah, you can kind of see our borders a bit better now. Um, obviously he didn't go up the bank at the back, but we go over sort of this little lumpy bit here is is on the border as well and then we go up into the woods We've got a couple of meters in into the woods and then we come down this side on this tree down sort of here um, He said he didn't go right up to the border another word as well I can't think of it right now but yeah we had a go with that that was hard work I wouldn't like to do this whole area with by hand <clears throat> Yeah, just find your rhythm. Am I good talent? <laughs> there you go, that's the 
No, it's still. Can't take you near Shaputin, the hiker, Tai. So, uh, we found out that the strimmer, we've already used ten litres of um, fuel. <laughs> And we've nowhere near finished, and uh, my Maya just one can of beer. <laughs> <laughs> Far more economical. Merge, merge, da? Yeah. The neighbour also come and did his. He had the same lawnmower. Um, and then obviously he's got a a family member with a tractor and all the gear and yeah he's got this machine here that he still needs to come and collect and I'm not sure if I'm right on this but I think this is called like a tethering machine or something it basically just fluffs up the grass that you've cut so it goes over the whole area with that and then um and then they rake it into piles and he's got this special sort of baling machine where he puts the grass into nice sort of rectangle cubes obviously easier for stacking but we spoke to him he said uh, one winter one cow 125 of those bales So today we're going to have a go at making one of those uh, sort of grass bales. Um, so the grass is quite a, a valuable sort of commodity here. Look at the dog barking at me because I've got out. Wait, wait. So yeah, we was using this little pathway here to get the ranger over to the cabin, but the guy that owns this bit of land um, asked us not to do that anymore because he wants the grass nice and long. So yeah, that's why we've been having trouble getting materials to the cabin. But yeah, we've started cutting the grass. So yeah, the, the people, the locals, they let the grass grow sort of waist height before they cut it and then they stack it in these like see if I can find a picture and put it on now anyway so yeah so they let the grass get really long and then they make one of these bales and that's what they sort of use to feed their livestock through the winter um, occasionally we get a guy come up with a couple of cows and he takes them up to a bit of land he's got out there he said he ran out of grass last year and he spent 7,000 lei buying more grass and that's like 1,200 quid I don't know how much grass he brought but so yeah we've only got a couple of chickens but we've got a lot of grass Anyway, that's what we're going to have a go at today, over here. So you start by putting a stick in the ground like that. And then you stack your grass around the stick, all the way up. And then you do like some funny, twisty stuff. The median knows what she's doing. What are these called that you're making? Capizza. A capizza. It's the pile of grass. It has to be a meter away from the big pole. Yeah.
I need Wawa to go settle it. Wawa! Looks heavy, is it heavy? Yeah. Not as heavy as would have been wet or green. I have no idea if I'm doing this. From here, it looks like you got slightly more on the right of the stick than the left. Dry, scratchy, itchy. You're going to go all the way to the top of the stick. Dance. La barra. La barra. <laughs> this is uh, country girl pole dancing. Get back. I'll get back to you when uh, I've done a bit more. I'll go and help. I feel bad just sitting here filming. I'll go carry some grass. Can you see this? A pair of Ocean's trousers. Jammy trousers. <laughs> Improvising, that's called. Yeah. I can't milk this filming anymore. I've got to go I've okay. got to go help. You need to go up on that. Right. So yeah, basically you just keep piling on your grass. Um one thing we learnt um halfway through this capizza was you're supposed to keep it off the floor and we didn't know that so we had to sort of break it all apart again take it all off and start again with some uh, tree branches underneath to keep it off the ground so yeah we're told that the person walking around on the top is kind of arranging the grass. Um, you can feel, you know, I got up there on the second one. You can feel if there's any sort of low spots or weak areas. But yeah, you just walk around the pole and sort of twist it all in. It doesn't blow away.
keep going, keep going. Come on, Denny, it's not exactly like that. Don't put it that way. Maybe that's a score that way. Can I jump? Not yet. Keep walking, Oli. So while we were making this uh, kapitsa, the first one, we had some of our neighbors come past and they stopped for a chat and see how we were doing. They um, taught us a little bit about what you have to do on the top. You have to sort of make this twisted piece of sort of grass rope and then you tie it in a knot. And then you put that over the post at the top and that's supposed to sort of stop the water going in there. So there she is, that's our first kapitsa. Um, yeah, it's a bit pathetic. Um, it's as tall as we could go. This was our second kapitsa. Um, just from the grass down here. It's a bit taller than the other one. And the other one was a bit pathetic, but it was our first attempt. Um, doesn't look very neat and tidy, but um, yeah, not not a bad effort for our second one. But, um, I don't know if we can see it actually down here. It's our neighbour Amelia went and spoke to him about making kapitsas, because he did eight before we could even finish one, and he's a nice and sort of uniform. If you look over there where the, where the grass is greener, you can see them sort of all stacked along. Yeah, so Amelia went over and spoke to him and he said, uh, rule number one is you keep your kapitsa off the floor. Um, so he uses some branches and stuff that he lays down on the floor first and then you stack your grass on top otherwise it goes rotten <clears throat> so that's rule number one and then obviously because we're cutting the grass with the strimmer it's like just mashing it up whereas he's got another one of those um, nice lawn mowers that sort of cuts the grass at ground level and it just lays down. So when he picks it up, it's all kind of facing in the same direction. I guess it's a it's the same sort of principle as like a thatched roof. Once you get it, once you get it right, once you get all your grass laying in the same direction. But you can see ours is just all over the place. We're beginners. We're learning. Um, that guy over there, he's, he's probably got like 30 years experience making kapitsas. Anyway. Or when it comes to cutting the grass next year. I don't know, maybe we're going to invest in one of these lawnmowers. a grand though. But it does speed up the process. Hopefully I won't just be there with my strimmer dreaming about a tractor. Watching the 
ठीक है This man's come to help us dig the hole for the septic tank. He's also going to uh, help us make some sort of road to get up here. Sometimes when they dig a hole, they put it straight in the dump truck. So they don't pile it on the ground like this man is. They put it straight in the dump truck. Look, he's moving that bit that you said. He's taking it in. He's going to push it over. Maybe <laughs> <laughs> he's going to scoop it up. Yeah, I thought he was going to scoop it up. Yeah. Jump truck and put it in the dump truck. Okay. Oh no, we're not getting the dump truck, buddy. We got, we got to deal with all that dirt. I don't know what we're gonna do with it. What should we do with it? Give it to him. He doesn't want it. Do you feel up those holes? We could fill up the holes, yeah, that we made when we was when we dug the holes originally, didn't we, for the cabin to be in a different place. We could fill those holes. Is he done? I think he might be done, yeah. Get him down. Get him down. So this guy with the JCB, he uh, he brought our septic tank over as well because it was at the other house. Obviously, we couldn't push it across um, over the neighbor's grass. It was before he cut the grass. Um, and then he went down and Tried to make us some sort of road, tried to level it out a bit. I mean it's still too it's still too off road for the for the car. Um so it still needs a little bit of work, maybe some some gravel and flattening out a bit better. So the guy you can see there in the blue shirt, he's he's the guy with the tractor that helps us out. He owns this bit of land. He said we could um, put a road through it now they're just chatting about there's a big boulder right in the middle of the drive there so um yeah he sort of said okay take the fence down and sort of move it over a bit which was nice of him to do that <laughs> Go on. It would be really nice to have like a pickup truck or something to do this job. <laughs> what did you do with the one you had? <laughs> so yeah, we had to carry up some sand to put in the bottom of the hole to because the septic tank is obviously cylinder um, so you're supposed to put in like a a layer of sand and so it sort of settles in and levels out uh, so it was like I don't know maybe 15 wheelbarrows of sand look at this beautiful road Gareth So 
So here we were just trying to find the best way to sort of lower it into the hole gently and get the get the sort of visitation holes at the top. Um, we didn't just want to sort of push it in there in case we pierced it or cracked it. So yeah, we was just trying to sort of lower it down gently, but it was quite heavy just for the the two of us. So we sort of put the ladder, we laid the ladder across the hole. We was thinking we could sort of lower it down um, just by sort of letting it go down the side of the hole. But um, yeah, it wasn't as easy as that. <laughs> Is he saying it's the plumber? Oh, he's saying that that end needs to come up. But 
it's kind of good if the, this end is a little bit higher isn't it because this is the way in so usually it has to be it will level help flow yeah it should be level but it will help flow because obviously that out pipe is lower than the in pipe isn't it i you think it is that. no yeah. Like part of my mouth about Oh yeah. I think you did like that though. So you can't go anywhere with a spade these days without being harassed by a chicken. They uh they want the worms. So the poop shoot is uh, nearly finished. So here we're on our sort of exit pipe. Um, one second before you cover it up. Catapult. So on our exit pipe, it's like a tube. Comes with these. Uh, all these holes and stuff in it. So we've got a layer of gravel underneath, layer of stones, and then another layer of stones on top. And then we've got this like fabric that we put over. I beg your pardon? Got this fabric we put over to stop the dirt going in the holes. So we're just covering it up now. So uh, Wawa said that I was too old to jump the septic tank, so me and her had a little bit of fun with the slow motion camera. So, work on the cabin has uh, run a bit dry at the moment, we're waiting for stuff to arrive, uh, lights, some more timber for the cladding, 
you still got to do those interior walls, but we're just waiting for the wood. But we heard about a, uh, a little gathering today. So we thought we'd take a day off and bring the children up to this mountain. Um, one of the tallest in Apu Seni. Apparently it's called Chicken Mountain. Not because it's full of chickens, but because it looks like a chicken. Anyway, there's a bit of a party going on up here today. A look at the view you've got. <laughs> Top of the world. A bit of singing, a few stalls, a bit festively like, but apparently it's a two day thing. People got here last night and there's a few fireworks and stuff, but we just came this morning <laughs> to check it out. Pretty spectacular. <laughs> Almost touched that cloud. in the ceiling joists. Uh, it's a job that I can't pull Amelia away from, she's loving it. Um, yeah, it's a bit tedious. And um, because we've only got battery tools, uh, it's like 20 minutes. 20 minutes on the sander, three hour charge. 20 minutes on the sander, three hour charge. So we're doing a lot by hand. A nice day off yesterday, didn't we? Went to the mm. festival. Do you want to give us a bit of history about the? Wow, yeah, it's the, the oldest uh, festival we have. It's called the Market for Girls, or kind of, and it's dated since 1820. 1819, it was. No, 1812. And the people used to go there to exchange or sell and the girls the young girls used to go with their parents it's on top of the mountains called uh, chicken mountains Montelegaina. beautiful though um busy a lot of youngster with tents alcohol on bikes park, on bikes yeah loads of cool bikes i guess because it's up there it's not a public highway is it so you don't need no. A license, or you don't need insurance, or nothing like that. So a lot you of people take their motorbikes up there <laughs> and just uh, rip around the mountain on them. Look like yeah. good fun, didn't it? Yeah. Yeah, quite quite nice one. So the festival of virgins, was it? Yeah, virgin girls. Virgins. 
they used to go there to find their husbands um, yeah giving kisses in exchange for a, a, a pie or a donut <laughs> traditional donut um, all in traditional costumes folkloric music yeah, a lot of boot slapping on that. Yeah, a lot, a lot of boot slapping. A lot of boot slapping. <laughs> um, <coughs> yeah, the, the clothes they used to make, um, all the woodworkers, um, what else, pottery. Um, not so many this year. This is my first year actually. I've never been on top of that that mountain. Yeah, but it wasn't far, was it? It was like about an hour, wasn't it? Yeah. An hour drive yeah. to get up there. And, and we the took the car, back. didn't we? Yeah. we? Took the car up. So I guess if it was there was tarmac for about I don't know a quarter of the way, wasn't it? And then it just went to dirt and rubble and stones. Yeah. So I guess on a rainy day we wouldn't get up there. Yeah, as we don't have the ranger, we were like... I was missing the ranger yesterday, yeah. Hitting and bumping and... <laughs> tried to park and... And we had less one yeah, window. Was <laughs> touching the floor when we were trying to park and... Yeah. yeah. But on the way back, we, we stopped um, for a while for berries. Yeah. Oh my God, there was, yeah, was loads of them. Yeah. yeah. We and got then, about four bags, didn't we? Yeah. Four, we got four little like sandwich bags full and we got two big jars of jam out of it didn't we yeah 800 grams 800 of grams of jam yeah that was uh, that was a good harvest yeah <laughs> yeah such a shame that we didn't find they usually sell on this kind of markets the traditional comb like a um, hair comb but bigger and you just collect you go it's uh, much easier yeah we all got stained fingers didn't we yesterday yeah. and purple purple it's fingers stained. yeah I even have it on my nail yeah. and I can't take it out. I was on Ocean, me and Ocean were a team and he was eating them faster than I could pick them. <laughs> <laughs> Same for the jam probably. Yeah. Well, if we only we had like a pickup truck move our stuff huh? what happened nice, with, wouldn't it? what happened with the ranger <laughs> this is a one wheel pickup truck <laughs> yes what's wrong with this pickup truck it's only one wheel drive Probably less than one horsepower <laughs> my little scrawny legs. And it has no air in it, yeah? It has a flat tire. Twenty more to go. <laughs> Hey buddy, hey. what is this? Pass, pass, pass. What is it buddy, a bouncy yeah. castle? Yeah, that, no that one. <laughs> that one, so what's this? This is the pieces. The pieces? Really yeah? Yeah, you need to cut scratch. And that, that part, that's easy I got because that's the door. Then... What are you doing? Loading. Ocean, watch out. It's coming. Thank you. Oh, 
Impossible. Finest day. Funnest. Yeah. Yeah, and you don't think. And I'm going to learn all of that. And roll. <laughs> we have. A, I have a a big spoon like um a, a witch's one, <laughs> which I need to find. We'll need it in a minute. It's a Sunday, a really nice Sunday afternoon. Look at those two. Look at those two. What is that? Oshi, what are you doing, buddy? Hello? Cruising. Cruising. Bye, Oshi. to go and find more sugar which I don't know where it is but we have 10 kilos of apricot and two kilos of sugar we need another kilo of sugar we'll go find it but first I need to put this on the fire excuse me oh it's heavy Tidy up this fire. Boiling hot outside. Imagine how it's to be here with the fire. Peace out. I'm going to enjoy the jam in the winter. <laughs> Not always. Hello. So, the wood got delivered. Down there, it's under the plastic. So, the guy gave us a call before he came and said, uh, can I try and bring my lorry up your new road? So he was like, yeah, go for it. Anyway, he ended up getting stuck and had to go and get his uh, plow to tow him up the hill.
that's the last of my wood for materials. I'm still not cladding. Getting on with some material balls. Let me show you those. So, children's bedrooms are all framed. Can't really see. Can't go far enough. To... So, yeah, did this one down the middle to separate the two rooms. Got this one in as well. This is I like to separate uh, the bathroom. This one, this space here is going to be like the children's sort of playroom or whatever you want to call it. I'm going to have a, a TV out there on this wall with their sort of games or whatever, and sofa, coffee table. So yeah, still got a couple more to do. The, the bedroom wall downstairs, I've still got that one to, to build. But yeah, this one, obviously I had to continue with the two by six for this middle one, because uh, I don't know if you remember, one of the videos I probably showed you that I had these supports going up and um, they were sort of diagonally braced, uh, like this last one at the end there. So yeah, I can get rid of those and sort of continue with the same thickness as what was used there. So, and plus it fits in between me, uh, my gable ends and that nicely. Yeah, so. so yeah, all the studs. Sort of, you can see the studs all going up and um, sort of meeting the rafter, and obviously they go down and sit on top of the, uh, the floor joists or ceiling joists, whatever you want to call those. So yeah, it's just like focusing on those strong points. So any snow or any load will just be transferred straight down, straight down, straight down to the pylons at the bottom. So yeah, I'm going to continue with this today. Um, got a bit more floor to put in down here, across to sort of close off uh, the bathroom space. So the bathroom is going to be here. With this piece of wood you can see here, that's sort of going to be the dividing wall there, and then. The door is actually going to be on this section so and to sort of save us a bit of space I'm going to hinge the door opening outwards so yeah the door will sort of open this way against that wall there so we've got plenty of room in here for a shower and a sink uh, to another toilet because we're plumbing the toilet is there so yeah um, these walls have sort of I've only framed them up to that up to there because I'm going to sort of close this area off all the way along both sides for the whole length of the house um, so for the children it will be sort of closed storage and well, just storage for whatever they want, really. Um, I'm probably going to build them a, uh, a sort of triangle wardrobe on this wall. The bed will sort of sit here. Um, radiators are going to go on this dividing wall, just to sort of simplify the plumbing. So the fire is going to be downstairs in this corner. Um, we've got one of those serpentine I think they're called 
here in Romania, but it's basically a wood burner that does your central heating as well. So we bought this kit, it comes with four radiators. So yeah, the children are both gonna have one. I'm gonna plumb it in from down there. It's gonna run along this wall, come up, and then run along this sort of under, through my uh, floor joists. And then I will just poke up where the radiator sits and it will come all the way along, hot and cold. And then it will sort of, it will be a dead end here for the last radiator to sit on this wall. Um, yeah, it's one thing I've sort of plumbing. I'm all right with plumbing. I don't mind the plumbing. Um, but the, yeah, I've never worked with this. I've never seen these sort of fires before. I don't know. I can't find anything on the internet about the order to do stuff like where to put the pump, where to put the um, overflow tank, and. All that sort of stuff, so yeah, scratching my head on that for a minute, but there we go. That's how far we've got with the interior walls. It's not very good in there. you to put it down through this hole. Down this one. So at the top there's a hole. Find it with your tiny hands. Found it. See? Yeah, no, it's there. You need to find the top of it. Find your head. See ya. You see it? Down. Here he comes. Yep. Okay, good job, buddy. How about this one? And this one goes down here. Like that. that one? Huh? So I've had to mute this bit of the footage because we had some music on and uh, YouTube won't be happy about it, so basically just cut a roll in half and then uh, cut it into sections and squashed it in the wall and then we had to do some foil to sort of hold it in place and then just sort of staple that on so the foil we just cut at 245 and then um, that just sort of done drop nicely rather than sort of having to Keep it on the roll. Hello. So we have officially moved in. Um, probably like 10 days now, two weeks, something like that. We've been just living in the new cabin. 
um, put the tent up just for a bit of uh, extra storage so all the kids toys wild wild oceans toys and stuff are all in there so Hello. they can go and uh, Betty's eating and drinking. Yeah. And eating grass. Betty is a chicken mother. What's she doing? Nursing some eggs at the minute, isn't she? Yeah. Yeah. She has 16 eggs. So she's living in the cabin with us <laughs> at the moment. Yes. But yeah, as I was saying, all the children's toys are in the tent, so we can. Uh, Put them in there to uh, while well, we're doing some work in the house. So I don't know if I showed you this wall. I did this dividing wall up here? We've started some insulation. the The nights are getting a lot colder, <clears throat> so we started some insulation. We've installed the wood burner but we're going to send it back we're not happy with it um, I think I mentioned before it's like a serpentine so you have all your sort of radiators hooked up to the back you have cold water in hot water out and then that sort of goes around to you radiators and it also got like a 100 litre tank for your which is down there 100 litre tank for your taps or shower whatever you want to use it for but yeah we're not happy with it we're going to send it back um obviously if you've got no power to power the pump you can't light the fire which here is not great. Um, it came damaged. It was all scratched. Uh, this handle here is supposed to be straight. You can see like how it's sort of been dropped or something in transit. There's the company we bought it from, Fornella. <clears throat> anyway, we have some parts missing. So we emailed them and said, look, it's damaged and there's bits missing. They sent us the missing bits, but they, and that was it. Didn't say nothing about the, the damage. <clears throat> um, as much as I love Romania, I love everything about Romania. Um, customer service is something they need to sort of improve on. Anyway, we brought another one. Um, that's just a wood burner there's no radiators attached so for this winter I think what I'm going to do is close off upstairs just put a bit of OSB or something up there and close that off and just have downstairs to keep us warm enough um, yeah the insulation we've started the insulation i've done the two gable ends upstairs um, but i thought i'd come down and start doing downstairs so it's, it's not what i was expecting to be honest um i was expecting sort of insulation with a, a paper back that you just staple to the inside of your um, studs but no that's not how it works in romania you have to put your insulation in and then you have to do more foil. So, yeah, that's what I've been doing. Now, because I use the 2x6 or the 5x15 here in Romania. So this is 15 centimeters. Um, the insulation that's 15 centimeters thick is well, it's too expensive. So what we did, we brought this stuff, which is 10 centimeters, 10 centimeters thick, but it comes in like a twin 
twin pack, so it's two lots of five. So we brought enough to do the whole house in ten, and then we brought enough to do the whole house again in five. So, yeah. So the second, well, after you've done the ten, then you do another one, but you just take it in half and make it up to fifteen. So, yeah. Here's the kitchen. So, uh, me and Ocean spent a couple of hours laying in some wire. And this is um, this is all for our plug sockets. This stuff we haven't got the stuff for the lights at the moment. So, as the store didn't have any the right size, so these ones up here that have gone through the the floor joists they're going to stay, but. Uh, I've decided to put all my wires outside the wall um, rather than inside the wall like I was originally going to do so I've sort of drilled a few holes in where my plug sockets were going to be but I've had to take all that out and put the insulation in obviously they were going to run through the insulation I was going to put a piece of 10 centimetre thick in, run the wires and then put the 5 on top once they're sort of pinned to the stud. But if I get a problem in the future with one of these wires, it's, I'm going to have to destroy the wall to get to the wire. So, yeah, all plumbing and electrics are going to run outside of the wall and I will try my best to, uh, to sort of hide them as best I can so we can't see them. What's his name? Jumper. Jumper. Jumpier. 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 Is that your pet? Yeah. He's gorgeous. Look at his big legs. Yeah, Ew, he has so many hands on his mouth. Yeah, he's just crawling on you. The septic tank's in. Um, but before we can use it, we need to fill it 25%. Um, which it works at about 850 litres of water. Um, so... For now, we've rigged up this tank with a little bit of gutter to try and fill this tank with rainwater so we can put it in. Um, there is a little bit of that wood you can see up there. It was actually what we had left from uh, the slats from the roof. I thought I'd be able to use them up there um, as we got quite a few of them. But I don't like it. I don't like it. it don't, didn't work out how I thought it was going to. So they're going to come down when we get our cladding. But for now, I've just left them up there. So yeah, we just screwed on a bit of gutter. And then sort of got that running down into this tank. Hopefully, we'll catch enough to sort of fill it up. something that I learned a bit too late as well um, when I was building the walls of the cabin I sort of kept in mind having some stud work in for plasterboard so you can see like this stud here this is just purely for plasterboard to attach to um, but it turns out that plasterboard 
is a completely different size to other sheet materials here in Romania. I don't know if that's the same in the UK. I don't know if a piece of OSB, I know it's four foot by eight foot, and I'm, I'm sure that a piece of plasterboard is four foot by eight foot. So that's what I assumed when I sort of built the cabin. I assumed that the plasterboard would come in the same size as the OSB, but it doesn't. It doesn't. It's bigger in length and smaller in width. So all that stud work I put in for plasterboard was a waste of time. Um, speaking to uh, some family, they say that um, you need these like metal aluminium strips that you put on and then you attach your OSB, uh, not your OSB, your plasterboard to that. <clears throat> so that sort of, it's just like a frame. I've seen it, I've seen it in the UK, but usually only in sort of retail areas where you have like a, a suspended ceiling in a, or like a, a fake wall. I didn't realize that you use it in your house here. So yeah, that's gonna be, <coughs> excuse me, that's gonna be uh, more expense that I wasn't expecting to buy all this aluminium sort of framing. So I'm not sure we're gonna do plasterboard on the walls anymore. Um, Still got some OSB left. Still got a little bit of OSB there. What I'm thinking now is to get some more OSB, some thinner stuff, the six mil stuff, and put that up on the inside and then do some sort of tunnel groove. Um, some tunnel groove sort of wood on top. I think that might work out cheaper. Yeah, so I wasted a lot of money and a lot of time on putting in stud work for plasterboard when I didn't need to, which is annoying. If I hadn't have done that, I would have had enough enough timber to uh, build the interior walls. We wouldn't have had to buy more. Anyway, I'm whispering a little bit. Ocean's still sleeping. So I did a little bit of plumbing. I don't know if you can see that. That's this one like the toilet. No. I'm not sure what's gonna happen in the bathroom. Obviously positioning the plug for the shower is tricky because uh, uh, I don't know what we're gonna put on the walls. Obviously you want your shower tray sitting in the corner, so it's, it's difficult, I don't know how to sort of work it out without having those materials on site, but yeah, the toilet's all plumbed in. Um, I've got all my, uh, got all my fittings and that ready, obviously the sink's easy, but, and the washing machine. But the, yeah, the shower's causing me a problem. Um, with the materials I've got, only gives me the hole has to be 14 centimeters away from like the plug in the shower tray. Um, so I don't want to cut, start cutting holes now, and then uh, do it like that, and then sort of get to fit it and have them in the wrong place. So. Just gonna wait for that until we've got something on the wall so I can proper sort of do the calculations. So we're just um, sort of laying out the bathroom where things are gonna go so we can start doing some pipe work. Um, 
obviously I need to know where the hot water is going to come in and where the toilet pipe is going to go out. <laughs> oh my god! <laughs> Did you see that? Is there a boy stuck in the toilet? Yeah, hello! <laughs> 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 Thanks for watching. Um, your support for the channel is is really appreciated. We are the channel is growing slowly but surely. So thank you very much, and uh, catch you on the next one.